Y'all can come in. This is Coach KB, and I'm here with Smitty, the elephant in the room. What's going on with y'all, man? It's your boy Smitty, the elephant in the room. And we here, man. Episode three. We got a special guest, man. Coach of the year. DCIAA Coach of the Year, man. Baloo High School Zone, South Southeast. Coach Kenny Brown. He brought a couple of his youngins with him, you know. Coach, what's going on, big fella? My guy, man. Thanks for the invite, brother. No question, man. How you feeling, man? Before we get into this season, man, I want to give you your flowers. Congratulations on Coach of the Year, man. I appreciate you. How that feel, man? Man, it felt good. I think it felt even better just knowing my players worked really hard this year. Because, I mean, it's no Coach of the Year without great players. So my players played their butts off. And and doing that, I was able to win one half of that, right? And the second half of that. Got really good coaches absolutely like my coaches they put it all on the line for the kids as well you know they really scheming up you know i don't call offense or defense right now i'm literally just the head coach so you know shouts out to everybody that runs the offense the defense and the special teams because if it was no them it would be no coach of the year if it was no great players there'd be no coach of the year so you know that's not lost on me and i just appreciate my players and i appreciate my coaches for making sure i got that award Absolutely. Shout out to the whole Baloo High School coaching staff, man. So, you know, man, I, I know this season it didn't end the way y'all wanted to or I wanted to. Before we actually go on it, I actually want to give you your flowers one more time. I want to appreciate you, man. First time I met you when I called you up, I was like, yo, coach, what's up? I gave you the rundown. I mean, you was like, come through. When I came up there, I'm thinking you just going to – me and my cameraman, shout out Cam, we were just going to introduce ourselves to y'all so you could say, oh, okay, he for real. He was like, shoot. Want to do the interview? Right now. So I got yes, Coach sir. Kenny Brown with me, head coach of Baloo High School. How you feeling today? Good, coach? man. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thanks man. for pulling up on us, man. Yes, sir. So, how you? What's your goals for this season, Coach? Uh, the goals. We have a lot of seniors. <laughs> oh shit! I look at Cam. Was like, come on, man, let's do it. Yeah, so sure. I want to give you your flowers for that because some people, coaches, would have been like, I don't know, man. He look young and upcoming. We don't want to mess with him yet. But you gave me my shot right there, so I want to give you your flowers. One thing about me, I always like to give people that gave me my start. They shot and they flowers right there on camera. So, you know, I want to thank you for that, man. Yeah, no problem, man. It's just, I feel like it's what we tasked, what we charged with. You know, when I was hired as the head coach in D.C., I was the youngest head coach ever, so I couldn't look nobody off because they're young. I mean, I think when it comes to cameras and interviews and spotlights, you ain't just want to interview me. You told me bring players. So, you know, we live in a world of NILs and with notoriety and name and likeness matters. So if anybody wants to come and interview and shine a light on myself or my players. Why not? We need that. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So, you know, this season, man, it might not have ended the way you wanted to, but, you know, you made it to the Turkey Bowl. Your team fought hard for you. And I remember when we first met, you gave it, basically watching me all this whole season, you basically gave me the breakdown of how your team is just in that first clip. You know I mean, you was like, my team is, they hungry. A lot of them didn't get to play a year, so they missed out on a year of their high school career. But one thing about them, they don't give up. And one thing when I watched y'all play, they didn't give up. Even in the Turkey Bowl, when it seemed like uh, Dunbar, shout out to Dunbar High School, congratulations. Yeah, he was fighting, and it was like, dang, they pulling off. Your team still didn't quit. Sure. Your, your quarterback, Kelvin, he kept playing out there. Your receivers, your defense, they still kept playing hard, man. So how that feel just seeing them like, y'all didn't quit on me. I thank y'all for the year. It didn't end the way, of course, y'all wanted it to end with the Turkey Bowl championship. Or going on to the whole city championship, but how that feel though? I mean, honestly, the destination is the journey, right? So we knew we would be. I always knew. It. Like if you played a clip back when I was on DC News, now me, uh, my receiver John, and then my receiver Lorenzo, I told them that it was a turkey bowl or bus type of season, and we appeared in the turkey bowl. Absolutely. The mantra, which you know, was "Road to Redemption." Absolutely. Like we wanted to redeem and restore what people know the Baloo to be, right? Baloo gonna play fast, Baloo gonna play physical, and you're not gonna have a rollover game when you play them guys from Southeast, definitely in the game that matters, right? So we wanted to bring that back. And like I told my seniors after the game, though we didn't get the ultimate goal, which was the turkey boat, journey was the destination. Absolutely. We've reached our goal. We brought redemption back to our school. Like, y'all was at the turkey boat? Yeah. You turned around, Southeast was there. Absolutely. There was no empty seat behind us. I turned around. Good. Like, I can show you my text, my calls, and support. That wasn't lost on me. So I told my players, that's what matters. That's what Road to Redemption was about, and they did that. 
they redeemed themselves, they redeemed the school, they redeemed the program, they got people believing again. They got kids knowing and seeing themselves in a blue jersey, saying, oh yeah, I can stay on the, I can stay on the South and win. So that's what it was about. So even though we ultimately ain't get the, we got that silver trophy, we ain't get the gold, right? We ultimately ain't get the gold like we wanted to, the journey was the destination. So just getting it, like getting it, the going through the grit, the grunts, everything it took. I mean, y'all been around us, y'all know all we went through, right? Like we overcame so much. And so to, to still get there was a testament to who I have in that locker room, man, the, to the coaches and players. So, you no know, hats off to them. So, ultimately, we didn't get what we wanted to be, but we right where we need to be. Absolutely, man. Like I said, congratulations on that, man. So, let me talk a little bit about your team, man. You know, yeah, you, sure. you like you told me at the beginning of the season, as I seen through the year, you had a senior field uh, team. You still got a couple great players coming back. Isaiah Halls, and you got Gio and them coming back. Yeah. Let's speak on them seniors for a second, man. Hey, who's who some of the seniors you want to give your flowers to right I there? Gotta, man? I got kind of give my flowers to what? I had like 17 to 20 seniors. <laughs> I got to give my flowers to, you know, them guys. Like, at the end of the day, they put the team on their backs. And like, you know, yeah, we're going to get there. i never forget, last year, so we're in 2023, right? So 2022, Lorenzo rolled with me to the Turkey Bowl. Zotron rolled me to the Turkey Bowl, and you know, we was at the game. We was watching Dunbar Roosevelt play. And he looked at me and said, I'm going to get you here next year. Like, I, we got to be in this game. And I'm going to get you here. And, you know, and that's been the motivation. And, you know, so, you know, Zoe kept his promise. Like, he got there, right? You know, Kelvin transferred in. And it's a little backstory on Kelvin. That's a quarterback for all of you, you know, right? So, like, Kelvin's supposed to come to me as an eighth grader. Right. Like, it's one of his, you know, it's a text. I still got a picture. It's a uh, KH, you know, his name Kelvin Hewitt. Times KB, four for four, like four for four turkey bowls, right? right? But, you know, he said, man, you know where we going. Like, there's no questions. He kept that promise. And, you know, the adversity. Y'all know the adversity Kelvin went through to, you know, to get back on the field. And, you know, Fonte Martin played super hard, whether it was at running back, whether it was at linebacker, whether it was at corner, whether it was at safety. He played six different positions this year, right? John. John told everybody at the D.C. News now, nobody in the city can guard me. The boy had 900 yards receiving and over 1,000 yards all purpose, right? Uh, we I mean, I talked about Zoe keeping his promise, but just his level of play. You know, I, I gave Zoe the name Zotron. And he lives up to that. I tell Zoe, when you put that crown on, you transform. That's Power Ranger mode. You transform into something different. And he kept that up, right? Shine, you know, Big 62, he led the line. He was the leader of the line. Um, along with uh, 55, Nico, who was the utility. Like, he going to play defense and offense. He going to give us all every single play and I think one of the key switches we did this guy's undersized but he got all the heart in the world right Jerome Kane he was playing DN you know he wanted to look sweet I get it right he played offensive line he was an undersized offensive line but he played offensive line his entire high school career but he's like you know what I'm undersized you know, he about Vontae size oh, yeah, I'm undersized yeah you know I'm, 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 I want to I want to try to you know play skills whatever and I gave him eight you know he's a, like he's going to always come he's going to always work hard so I rewarded him with that right he was a program kid. But then mid-season, you know, we kind of going through that rough patch. He looked at me and said, I'm going back to center. <laughs> but it was a key switch for us, though. And we needed that. And I will forever love Kane for that. Because that took us, you know, that took us up a notch. And you look at our backfield, 21, Burgess. Burgess ran hard for us all year. We needed them tough yards. He got Burgess is going to duck his shoulder. He gonna get, Burgess ain't even super fast. But he's going to hit the hole. He's going to read it real soon. And he's going to get there, right? Um, you look at six, Dwayne Nicholson. Y'all see him? He didn't took plenty. Like, he didn't have like what three or four interceptions on a year. Kick returns he didn't took back. He just plays with all his heart on the line. And like Vontae, DJ played five, six different positions, right? Um, let me see. I'm not Deron. Deron number four. He trans. You know he had the big the interception in the Turkey Bowl. He transferred over, and you know he just wanted to. He didn't really win no games in high school, and he wanted to win. He wanted to come compete. And, you know, you know, his family ended up moving. And he said, like, I'm hungry and I want to be a part of what y'all got going on. He ain't disappointed. Right? So, you know, all the scenes we have, it's just they came to play. They didn't disappoint at all. Khalil, Hillstalk's number nine. Y'all know nine, nine. He yeah. played half the year. Nah. He was injured. You know, he's coming off his uh, meniscus surgery, right? And he came back, like, mid-season. And he started, you know, he was a linebacker at first. But he was like, you know, I ain't the linebacker was moving and grooving before I got back. So what I'm going to do for the team, I'm going to drop the DN. So what I love about this senior class, 
for the first time as a head coach, I didn't have a selfish bunch, right? They show acts of selfishness. Khalil went to DN. He won player of the year for defense last year for the D.C. Gridiron Joint. Had over 120 tackles. But he went to DN to help the team. And it's just so many uh, players on our team who sacrifice their own personal accomplishments for the team and play various other positions or when we needed to be. So I think ultimately that's why I appreciate my scenes. I know this answer was kind of long, but I think these scenes deserve that long answer. Uh, you know, they just they just left it all on the line. And it's a strong brotherhood. Like, the last thing I want to note about these seniors, most of my seniors was rivals in middle school. Yeah, I seen that on a bunch of their IGs. Like they, they were rivals. They old, they old uh, middle school. Like, look pictures. at it. Kelvin and Zoe were two of the most highly recruited middle schoolers out of D.C. public schools. Like, if you're talking about football, you wanted number one from Johnson or you wanted number five from Hart. And they hated each other. Like, they carried that, like, real. Like, man, Zoe, I ain't talking to him. I'm not talking to him. <laughs> and Kelvin, like, yeah, I beat you. You know what I mean? But it was that type rivalry, and you know, just to see them four years later and it, to come to fruition, like, dang, this is what it's supposed to be like. You know what I mean? So, you know, they deserved that. They were really selfless, and you know, it showed. It got you know to the Alls and the Gold to the Turkey Bowl. We ain't, you know, it ain't in how we wanted to, but like I say, the journey is the destination. Absolutely, man. You know, for the juniors and sophomores and the freshmen too, that want to see. They know how it feels, so they know how it feels to lose, too. So they know got now we got to work on it so we can get there for next year. That's good, man. You said that was a long answer. Shoot, I ain't mad you gave your seniors. They do flowers. Yeah, they, they gave them their flowers. Absolutely. So as, let's speak on your coaching staff a little bit while we're here, man. Sure. Who, who on the coaching staff you want to get their flowers to? I give my flowers to uh, my man C Boogie, as I call Yeah, him, shout out C, man. The she, is a, she, is a, she is a crazy dude. Because at first... <laughs> It, uh, what's his name, Lonzo? I thought that was his little brother or his son or nephew because <laughs> the way he always grinding Lonzo. Yeah. So when I first, he'd be like, Lonzo, hey, Lonzo. He'd be like, that's right. Come see me, Lonzo. He'd be like, man, what? He'd be like, that. we all saw it. And I used to be like, damn, why is he always grinding? So the one day yeah. I just stopped him. I said, see, is that your son or your little brother? He was like, nah, why? He looked like me. I said, sort of. He was like, yeah, everybody said it. No, nah. and he just gave me the backdrop of why yeah. he'd be on him. So, man, who else on your staff do you want to get your flowers? I know so, you want to get a whole staff. Like, like you said, C, though, like, you know, C's grown a lot. Like, this is the second year as a wide receiver coach, and, you know, he's grown so much. And it's funny you say that because he treats, you know, his core group like his little brothers. You know, she's not that old. She's like 26. Yeah. You know, he's treated his core group like his little brothers. And I got shot at all of them. Like, why we give him, like, got my Sam, my flower, like, all my coaches. Coach Vaughn. Coach Vaughn will literally make sure these kids have a coat off his back if he needs to. Like, Vaughn literally loves the kids. Ace, y'all know Ace. Absolutely. Coach Ace is Ace first year as a D coordinator. Ace only, what, 27, 28 years old. First year as a defensive coordinator, led us to the championship. Hey, you know money I mean? down, money down, money. I told him he got the keys and, you know, he took it and drove with Bentley. Absolutely. And, you know, so shout out Ace and, you know, even Bibby. Bibby makes my life easier. Like, Bibby handles a lot on the administrative end, handles a lot of the equipment. And I get Bibby, like, I get Bibby hell sometimes. But I know he can, you know, I know he can stand to the test and, He's made my life easier with that. And then, like I shout out my right-hand man, my ace boom coach, Terry. Y'all see Terry with me all the time. You know, that's my guy. You know, that's my assistant head coach. And, you know, sometimes me and Terry go at it just because Terry is just Terry. <laughs> but that's my man. Like, I wouldn't be here without him. Right. right? And, and I, the offensive guys, Navon, what he does with the running backs, second to none. Right? Uh, new, new guy with the staff, Coach Real. Coach Real, he takes the offensive line and he takes it personal with them. Because he knows where they can get. He's an offensive lineman thick and through. And he teaches, he, he carries it true. And he wants to, everybody wants to get the best out of each and every one of them. So, you know, shout out Real. Uh, shout out my guy, Coach Moore. Moore, Moore man. The air show. Early during the season, dropping bombs. Yeah, you know was. what I mean? So, he be dropping bombs. And, and ooh, ooh, I ain't forget nobody. Um, Before I go to this person, I ain't forget nobody. You know, Josh. Josh helps host way. You know, I know Sway 14. Yeah, you know, Josh Sway, came through Sway, and yeah. Sway, Sway. Josh came through and, you know, helped host, host Sway on a lot of form. And, you know, Host Sway made like 30 PATs this year. He went from like, what, like a lamb last year to what, 30 something this year? That's you know, that's good. a that's, real that's good a big improvement. Team. And, you know, you know, Josh helped with that. And, you know, Keith came first year as a DB coach. You know, Keith's cool as hell on the sideline. But he tapped in with his crew. What they call themselves like DBU, right? Yeah. Um you know, I got to shout out my guy Keith, my recruiting coordinator. Every game, y'all seen the middle schoolers, yeah. even at the Turkey Bowl, right? So Keith made sure the middle schoolers knew when they felt the energy on the south. 
And then I got to shout out my guy Dirk. Like, my guy Dirk Daniels, a mastermind at what he does. For one, he got to deal with uh, my toxic quarterback every day. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah, you know, you know, he love Kelvin. But Dirk got to deal. Dirk is Kelvin one on one, and Dirk pushes Kelvin to the to the max. And with him pushing Kelvin, Kelvin pushed the team, right? So you know what Dirk came through, and, and Dirk came through as like a consultant. He came through as a consultant, letting us know our flaws as a coaching staff, and him letting us know our flaws as a coaching staff exposed a lot before we let another team expose us. On the field, Dirk was exposing us in the coaching meetings, letting us know what we was doing wrong. Like, he's such a numbers guy. He's like a, a genius, really. So he's going to break down, oh, this is how efficiency on fourth down. This is how efficiency on third down. You know, this is kill the completion rate. This is what we need to do to win, right? So he came through in a, in, a, in a golden time, you know, in which we really needed him. So, you know, shout out my whole staff. I, I believe I remember to everybody. And if I don't, y'all know I really, really love y'all. Good man, shout out to the whole Blue Coaches staff. Shout out to all y'all, man. Y'all showed me the whole Pearl House Sports, Pearl House TV as a brand love, man. So I'm always appreciate y'all for that. I can't wait for the summer Pearl when we come pull up and maybe a couple of them juniors that's about to be seniors out there that I could come out there and barbecue bake on the field and let oh, them man, know I pull pick. up. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that, man. So since we speaking on Isaiah, I got to say this, coach, because I text you this and I got to get it off my chest and off the right. DCIAA, this does not reflect Coach Brown or Blue High School. <laughs> what I'm about to say, this respects uh, this directly affects me and Pearl House. I'm trying to figure something out. How does a kid that led the city in tackles, tackled by kind of a landslide, it would have been disrespectful for Isaiah to make second team all defense. But he didn't make first team. He didn't make none. And I felt a certain way about that. And I remember I texted him on Instagram and I told him, hey, yo, use that as motivation for next for the Turkey Bowl and for next season to make him be like, oh, we should have gave this man co-defensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, or, or one of the uh, all-defensive teams, man. How that make you feel as a coach just for him? Because like you said, you look at all them like they're your little brothers, your sons, you love them to death. How that make you feel for him, man? I mean, I just want to add to that, right? He had 13 times in the Turkey Bowl. <laughs> I would add to that. But, I mean, honestly, though, Smitty, I want a surprise. I get it. Khalil last year. Khalil yeah. had 115, when I say 120 times, something like that. He didn't make it. He didn't make first or second team last year. So, hey, like. DCA, oh, the DCAA. <laughs> Y'all can contact me, Smitty underscore GZZZ yeah. on Instagram. I come join the team. I like being a scout. My whole crew will tell you. So, I come tell you, this guy needs to make it, this guy needs to make it. Because that don't make no sense. I ain't even going to put on DCAA, the coaches vote. Okay. Coaches, how y'all supposed to be coaches? Yeah, I got it. yeah, the coaches vote, man. So, you know, um, I expected it. Like, I didn't expect it to be Isaiah, but I like I know it can also be anyone. Right. You know, it could have been very well It could have been very well Kelvin. It could have been Zoe. It could have been anybody, right? If it had so, been one of them two, I would have been heated. I would have been tagging them on IG <laughs> like, oh, how this guy you know, leave with touchdowns and they make it? So, I wasn't surprised, but like you, I told Isaiah, show everybody why you deserve it, right? Because, again, like you said, Isaiah had over 120 tackles and. The first two games, I ain't playing my linebacker for real. Remember the Anacostia game? Yeah, that's what you Remember the Anacostia game? He was a quarterback. He threw two touchdowns and covered like 250 yards, something like that. So, you know, <laughs> I expected it. Isaiah is a great athlete. He's a great linebacker. Isaiah's going to have a great offseason. And the city going to be on notice who he is. But like I told you earlier in the interview when you just asked me, that's why like, I didn't mind when people like you want to pull up to the field and add like to the players. Because when you first pulled up, who's the first kid I sent over there? Isaiah. Isaiah Hall. Right, so I actually posted him on my page, and I had a couple people hit me. They're like, "Who is that kid?" I said, yeah. "Man, he's young, and I just met him. I don't know him too well, but I'm gonna and, get to know him." And, and that's what that exposure does, right? So coaches, you know, we go through the game, and sometimes we see numbers, but we don't know the names. So that's why I love my kids getting interviews, notoriety, whatever right. it is. I let anybody put up. Y'all know outside has be like twenty. 15 cameras deep. I remember Maybe. that one game, the ref turned around and she looked at me. She was like, "It's a lot of people on the sideline. And I was, you was like, shoot, we got a lot of media that want to check out. You heard me, I said, I didn't know you heard me say that, but I said that. Bro, I ain't going to never forget homecoming. I felt like I was in Colorado or somewhere. <laughs> like, but I said it to say, man, I said it's special. And he going to be special. Like I told him, like, college ain't going to When college is called me, they don't ask me if this guy first team all conference. They just it's ask not, you to see his tape. They want to see his tape. And anybody see that boy tape is going to see that he is exactly who he Absolutely. is. So this all season, Isaiah is going to gain about five to ten pounds of muscle. He is going to get fast and speed and agility. And I pray for the DCIAA next year when it comes to Isaiah Hall. Absolutely. Defensive MVP. Defensive MVP. That's like, I, I don't it like don't. picking favorites when it comes to kids. 
But one thing about me, I just like people that when I see them, they like, I'm giving all my, I'm you giving it everything. All. So when I was watching, I'm like, damn. First game, even though y'all lost that nail biter and the costume, I was like, damn, he going out there. Hey, shit, boy, me. That's a pass. Ah! Let's go, I kept talking on the sideline. He's like, man, I hate playing quarterback. I can't wait till Kelvin come back. I want to get on defense. So I'm like, what? I'm like, he's, all you need to do is work on your accuracy. And maybe if you gain a couple inches, you probably going to go to college for quarterback. Yeah. He was like, no, I like defense. I like defense. Let, let Kelvin man, get it. Then y'all seen him on defense. Yeah, and I was like, hey, listen, God. I don't like to talk about it with this, bro, but they don't. They don't score 14 points in the fourth quarter with Isaiah Harden linebacker. No, that's a fact. I that just ain't, ain't know. Ain't, ain't I honestly ain't know how long Kelvin was going to be out with Kelvin's injury. Yeah, me so, and Kelvin talked about yeah, that. Yeah, I ain't really I know how long. Him. So, we had to rock with five as the quarterback. I, I was fully trusted in that. Like I told Isaiah, but I couldn't risk that on defense. So, they don't score 14. And they know that. They don't score 14 points on, in the fourth true. quarter with Isaiah Hall on defense. And that goes so back Isaiah to special. you giving Ace Boogie his flowers his first year being a coach. He got a play kid that leads the whole city with exactly. all them schools, public and private schools in D.C., and he let all them to tackle. So that go back to you giving your coaching staff their flowers, man. That's good, man. So now that we, we even talked about the juniors, the seniors, what's something that you expecting to see out your team? Like, I know it's high school. I ain't finished with the juniors, though. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I need a nah, hit. It's like a couple more, though. Like, you said oh, shout Gio. out Gio. Gio, my Gio bad. Gio, ball. Gio's my man. That he ball on the head, Gio going to go get it, right? Number 10. Yeah, Gio. And that, that 10 ain't going to be 10 next year. What's it going to be? I don't know yet, but it ain't going to be 10. Oh, he changed it. Gio number. the guy. He pulling the Trayvon Diggs. He changed yeah, the Gio the guy, right? Okay. Gio going there. That that double drop to a single. Um, so Gio, yeah. Oh, and um, Gio, you know when you drop to a single as a DB, you get a target on your back because people be like, oh, yeah. he think he that. So Gio gonna be a guy. Like Gio gonna gain about ten pounds of muscle. Eli number zero. He was a playmaker all year. Eli, yeah. He was, Eli was a playmaker receiver, all year. Right? Slot receiver, yeah. yeah. So we expect a lot out of him. Um, Marcus coming off DN number eleven. Number 11. Like, yeah, I thought he was a senior. Nah, man. number 11. And Marcus had 12 sacks. First year starting at DN, right? This is first year starting at DN, 12 sacks. So, you know, just off of Isaiah, Gio, Marcus, and uh, uh, Eli, this is four. That's a microcosm of my scenes. Like, it's so funny. People think because I'm losing 17 to 20 scenes. It's the thing. I got 13 juniors coming back. And be three seniors. or four of them got snubbed from uh, selection. So that don't lets forget, you know. Don't forget my other junior got snubbed. Host way. You're not telling me, you know, oh, Sway got snub. He didn't even get second team. He made that's 30 Cam, man. Teams. That's why Cam was looking at you. That's his man, oh, Sway. That's what I'm saying. He got snub. So, oh, Sway leg going to get stronger. Like, we got a plan for oh, Sway to be making 25 to 30 yards next year. Field goal. So, you know what I mean? We got a lot of talent coming back. And, you know, I'm excited. So, next, I guess we can lead on to that question you asked me now. What did you ask me again? I was about to ask you. So, now that you beat them both amped up, your juniors, what you expecting out of them for next year? Because they going to be the ones that you look into to be like, I'm just the coach on the sidelines, on the field. Y'all the coaches. So what yeah, you expecting so out of them? As much as I had a bond with my current scenes, because like, I've had them since they've been in eighth grade. Their ninth grade it was fully COVID, and we didn't do no football stuff. Yeah. So what's a re real reflection of it? Like Isaiah Marcus in them, right? Since they've been in ninth grade, the only coach they've known is, is me, right? Because they was the first year, you know, uh, JT and them class was 10th graders, and Isaiah was ninth grader. Right. So I've had them. It's going on their fourth year, so they are also full-out program kids, and they had the experience of a turkey bowl. So what I'm expecting is y'all not ever going to forget that. Like I told a couple kids in the building, we went to the turkey bowl, and I never want to not be there. So I'm not saying we're going to make it every year, but I'm saying that is the standard. Yeah, is the standard. That is the standard, and that's what we're standing on, right? You say stand on business, but we stand on business of like we want to get to that game, and no matter you know, what freshman or whoever comes in, that's the stand, and that's what we lead with. And, and it's the first year, right? You can't look to a John. You can't look to a Zoe. You can't look to a Kelvin, no Vontae, no Shine. Who's going to merge? So the all season to me is the greatest time because you have, you it's know. Who's serious and who's not? Come on now. You got eight months to prepare for battle. Eight, nine months really to prepare for battle. And I'm just really interested, interested to see who's going to merge as the next leaders, the next dogs. Because for the first time, we can't run to everybody else. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, like I spoke of them juniors and them sophomores. We got coming back. We got some sophomores and freshmen I ain't even going to talk about. But I'm looking forward to them. And the standard is the standard. It's been set. It's been at a mark. We played on Thanksgiving. I never expect us not to now 
and, and, and that's the standard moving forward for the guys. And like I say, Gio, Isaiah, Eli, Marcus, Josue, like they leading with that. And I know that's going to carry them. And Because I'm going to say something, Smitty, and my seniors can say what they want. Them juniors' work ethic is better than seniors. Oh, 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 they know that, though. Oh, so they, hey, they hey, know Kelvin, that, though. Vaughn, y'all going to have to get on the mic and say what y'all got yeah. to say to that. They know what that. Got to say, they man. know they talented, but they know the juniors' work hey. ethic is better than this. They got to earn their play time. <laughs> oh, they got to earn it. They got to earn it. Vaughn, what you, what you got to say? He <laughs> said they got better work ethic yeah, than They still got, they still trying to prove, like, what we always been proving. I'm not saying that. God did don't have a low work ethic, but you prove it. You trying to prove to the coach that you want to be a job on the field. Okay. Yeah. So they gonna work really hard. Ah. Geo Isaiah, I can match <laughs> y'all up. And the quarterback who showed me everything he told me he was gonna do when I first met him said, "Y'all got to prove it. I proved mine. So what y'all gonna do?" Yeah. And this is friendly college. It's a brotherhood. We didn't set at Baloo. Like, you know, I seen this shit that them guys like they genuinely cared about one another, dog. Like genuinely cared about one another, and they created bonds that I, you know, foresee just moving forward. Like, you know, Kelvin, Kelvin called me on what, like Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. I was out of town for a little bit, um, and he was just like, "Yo, when it's time to go to school, these schools call." Like, you know, me and Zoe and JT might want to still play together, and then you know, it's school Monday. Like, oh, me and Sean can play here together. Like, you know what I mean? So they talking about That's where good. they gonna go with one another, or what they could do with one another, and. You know, it's just a bond. All they eat lunch together, they walk in the store, they, all that. That's so good. I just hope that's the real silver lining that we carry over, right? Outside of all the hunger and everything to get back to the turkey bowl, it's really about the family, the brotherhood, the bond. Like that's what Baloo is. Them, it's a real family. Like we invited y'all and y'all was family. That's like true. no matter what, and that's y'all see our sidelines. Like we treat each other like family, and I stand on that. And I hope Gio, Isaiah, all them guys that did it. You know, Eli. That's what they carry on. That's the tradition that they carry on because that's what them guys did. And I hope they carry that on, and that's a part of the standard in getting to the turkey bowl. Absolutely, man. The standard's the standard. Y'all heard that there. So juniors, sophomores, and even y'all freshmen, y'all know, starting if y'all not playing basketball or running track, soccer, whatever it is, y'all not to work because the standard's the standard. For sure. So since we speaking on what they planning on doing, the JTs, the Kelvins, the Vons, all of them talking about, what is it some of them schools did any of them commit yet now nah, ain't nobody commit yet um you think about it we at the time period now where all the colleges are like rounding off their season so within the next two weeks everybody is really going to get on the road and really evaluate these guys right and, and to see where they're going so i foresee what we at like what we, november 27th something december like that December this weekend so yeah so just say like a month two months it's going to be a lot more interest with these guys and a lot more, you know, the ball is going to get rolling a lot more. Okay, okay. So that Visits means and everything. So, so that's good. So that means in a few months I should be getting some messages like, yo, Smitty, I committed. So oh, we telling Pearl House already, like, signing day, we need, you know, Pearl House coming to Say no more. Sure I, was going, I was just going to throw that out there, nah, but I was going to wait. Smitty, y'all, y'all, you can, y'all, y'all, y'all got you. full access. Y'all know that. I got to see got that. I got access. you. I love that. And I'm going to tell you why I love that, right? Because when I, I had been talking about doing a podcast for about two years, I just had to get certain things set sure. up to do it because you was it's like it's a business, so you can't just jump out there and do it. You got to set yourself up. But I told myself the main thing I'm going to do, because I could talk about professional sports all day. Yeah. But like I want to do is highlight the youth, put them in the spotlight because let's say my thing does take off. I want to make sure the youth could be like, oh, now this kids can look at people. These uh, coaches can look at kids from Southeast. They can look at kids from North Philly. Look at kids from Baltimore, these neighborhoods and these cities where people be like, hey, they got talent, but I don't know if I want to go that round there. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I put them on a platform where it's like, oh, he played there? Yeah, man, it's not bad down there. I mean, of course, every city got their neighborhood, but you go down there, you good. So I want to thank you for that, bring letting us come down there. Sure. And also, that shout out to my man Calvin, man. And I'm, I know we talked about this. I don't want to lecture your head off, but when I first met Calvin, since we speak in a different section of different cities, when I first met him and I asked him, I said, why you ain't playing the first game? He told me the injury that happened. Anybody that know that, that little clip will be coming out soon. I'm not going to talk about that there unless Calvin want to speak to that on his camera. But that clip will be out soon so you can see what happened. And I had to tell Calvin, I was like, man, from what your coach tell me, you talented. You like real talented. You got a chance to go to college. And once you get in college, the ball's in your hand where it goes from after that. So, you know. That's why I like to do my podcast is put a spotlight on the youth because a lot of times people won't give a place like Baloo a highlight because, like I said, it's in Southeast D.C. Sure. So they say, oh, Southeast, I'm not going to Southeast. I'm not doing that. 
So, yeah, that's one thing we want to do here at Pearl House, Pearl House Sports, man. And Smitty the Elephant Room, I want to make sure I spot like that. So, but, um, I remember in our first time meeting, I asked you, I said, how do you deal with these kids? Because high school is like you looking at them like your little brothers that you letting off into the world where you like, you my little brother, but you a grown man. I got to let you live your life. Yeah. So, so you can tell these people to be here in the interview. How do you deal with each one of these kids, man? And how do you deal with them, man? Oh, man. Requires a lot of sleep. No, I'm playing. <laughs> nah, man. Honestly, you got to love each of them different, bro. Like. The way I treat Vontae isn't the way I treat Kelvin. The way crazy I treat Kelvin Vontae. ain't the way crazy Vontae ass Vontae. Had, I went cut you off of Vontae a couple times on the sideline. Had me ready to grab my bread and be like, shut up, Vontae. Just listen to your damn man, coach, for man. for real. Hit Vontae with the go home Roger a hundred times a day, man. man you know, but just love him differently, bro. Like, end of the day, they're people. Yeah, they Absolutely. could be football players. They could be high schoolers. They could be whatever. But at the end of the day, they're people and. You know, I, I treat them as such. Like, literally, I love them all different. I communicate with them all different. And, you know, that's what I stand on. Like, I know how to deal with people. And, you know, I don't know how to appeal to people's emotions and, you know, try to get the most out of them. And, you know, that's how I choose to to conduct my team. Like, with some people, I might be a little loose. With some people, I might be a little stern. With some people, I might be more, I might communicate a little more. With some people, I might just put my arm around them a little more. Whatever it is, like you just got to love them all different. But that's a part of you as a head coach or you as any type of coach, position coach, whatever, knowing your team. And, like, I ain't no parent yet, but I'm assuming that's even how you got to parent your kids. Absolutely. Like, every one of them going to be different. And, you know, I acknowledge that to me, like, coaching is teaching. And if you're a teacher, like, you can't teach every kid the same. And it sucks sometimes you have a class full of 30, but you got to figure out how to get the most out of them. And as a head football coach, you got to figure out – how to get the most out of them and, and and just understand each and every one of them is different and you gotta love them all different and, and you know that's what I that's what I've been able to do and you know that's what led me this far. Yeah, cause that, 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 I got two sons and I got a daughter. You, you lo- and I love each one of them different journey. I love, but she she's she's thirteen, so you know that's she in a teenager. Yeah, that sure. Makes me want to strangle her when I'm texting her. Then I got Jazir. He's the smarter one, so I, he just got a smart mouth. So I just know I got to be like, hey, bro, I'm not just brother or your sister. Yeah. Like, then Junior, he's the younger one, so he's a little hyper. So, yeah, I understand exactly what you mean by you got to love That's each and every one the same, but you just love them in different ways. So I definitely respect and understand that. So, you know, we talked about what we expect for next year, man. Talk about some of the kids, the seniors, man, they leaving you, man. How you going to feel about them leaving Real you, quick, Smitty, I just had, like, such a, a, a okay, wild moment this, in my this, head. This, this, this nah. the Coach Brown Baloo <laughs> show, man, right Nah, here. nah, nah. I realized one coach that I forgot to give a shout-out oh, yeah, to, and he deserves a big, huge shout-out. Because, like, he the per- he just, he's the coach that get our kids bigger, faster, stronger. Like, it's still the discipline. Shout-out my guy, Shorts. Yeah, like shorts, shorts make my damn. guy. Yeah, shorts is in the box this year. So like, even when I'm you know going through, but anyway, man, like shorts is still the discipline to where like I don't have to practice start at five. I don't have to step on the field to like five twenty five because shorts got him. Shorts gonna be on him. Shorts gonna be hard on him. Man, they probably hate shorts, <laughs> but love him at the same time and they respect him. You know, all season he got them big, he got them fast, he got them stronger. He got he instilled the wheel in them. Man, you should have seen the practice sometimes. Like, man, shorts made them people's run. Now you got to do them sometimes. They look at me like, man, what you going to do with them? Go ahead, shorts. Keep going. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he did that. And shorts, when we talk about flowers, shorts deserves his Absolutely. flowers. You need them coaches like man, that. Man, shorts made, shorts have whipped them up the peanut butter and jelly. Oh, yeah. You know, then, yeah. you know, put them in that weight room real session and make them run the heels. Like, shorts put the time, effort in, like. You know, Schultz just had a little baby girl, so you know to dedicate his time. In a lot of my coaches, something to dedicate him. A lot of my coaches did this kid, so like I salute all of them on this. But Schultz dedicating his time, and you know he got a newborn at the house. Like this is a testament of what you know people laid on the line for the program. So shout out my guy Schultz, like big big deal, and we wouldn't be we yet if my man Schultz ain't come through. So. Shorts, that's your flowers, as Smitty say, for sure. Damn right, shout out Coach Schwartz. You need people like that, not even just as kids, but even as too. a grown, even as a, a adult, you need people like that. That's gonna be like, man, I hate this mother, but you need, but I love you, man, because I need you right there, sure. be keeping me on my keys and cues and on my game, letting me know this is how it's gonna be done. Because if you do it the other way, shit ain't gonna get done yeah. right. Yeah. 
What was your question? Just about seniors. Yeah, man, bad, bad, seniors. Bad. How that make you feel though that they going off? Some of the, a lot of them gonna be off man. in college, man. You take you say you know them since eighth grade, man. <laughs> you just you broke down them leaving and you been it, but how that gonna make you feel? Dog, you know what's crazy? It was like before senior night. I think I told the team like or maybe around uh, some point in the season. Everything went together at this point. I just told him I was watching the show on Apple TV. Uh, Kevin Durant and like it's called Swagger, and like I kind of was binge watching it. And um, it was an episode, like, where he had kids that he's had since AAU. So, they're, like, 12, 13. Basically, kind of around the time I met my kids, right? And, you know, he ended up being in high school coach, and he was at a banquet. And he was just crying, like, inch, like while he was acknowledging them at the senior night, or at the senior banquet. And I told my team, like, you know, at that moment, like, I had a little moment, like, damn, in a couple weeks, that's going to be me. You know what I mean? So, fast forward to at the Turkey Bowl, it was like a minute left. We just knew we knew we, knew we lost, and the time just going down. I see Big Monte, hands in his face. Shine trying to cover his face with his jersey. Miko on one knee with his hands. Yeah, in his that face. broke me down. That's what yeah. made me make that video I made on Instagram the next day because I was like, because it almost broke. I was like, damn. Yeah, man. Nico with his hands in his face. Zoe on the training table with the towel around his face. Khalil, 21, arms just behind his back. Just looking and like taking in the moment, but you know you see tears drop. Like that moment almost. Hey, I ain't gonna lie though. That moment almost caught me. Like I had a moment that like looked at like like these are my guys, my youngest. You know, I'll never coach them again. So you know, I'm learning. I'm probably gonna have a lot more moments like this Absolutely. as a head coach, right? You know, I'm gonna always have guys that I board in that it's not gonna be the same. But this being my first, right? This being my first this batch first of kids, batch, yeah. I built a bond with who trusted me, who seen it through. You know, it just you know became like a super emotional moment. And no matter how many classes I have, like I'm going to always forever love the class of 2024. Like those are my first original sons, little homies, little brothers, nephews, whatever it is you want to call it. Those are my first deaths. So right. you know, it's definitely a moment. And then like, I definitely think, I definitely know. I'm gonna probably talk to these guys for the rest of their lives. I'm going to probably know their kids. I'm going to probably know their wives. You know what I mean? I'm going to be in their lives. I'm going to probably go to some of their weddings, college graduations, whatever it is. Like, I know I'm going to be involved for the most part for them for the rest of their lives. Like, that's how just locked in we've been. Like, we've been through too much together. Lord knows we've been through too much together, especially these two beside me. The conversation I had with these two mothers, like, about these two. You know what I mean? Like, and it just, you know, I know other family members are there, so – it's like I'm immersed within their families and they immersed within mine. So, you know, it's definitely super emotional. But, you know, life goes on and we transition and super excited to see what the next phase brings for them. That's right. Uh, whether it's college, whether it's career, whatever it is, I'm super excited for that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Man, I remember when I first met you too, I want to bring this up. I remember that one line because – and I'm thinking you just saying it because I'm there. But then I'm also seeing you constantly saying, I'm like, no, that's how Coach humbles them. And I like that of what you did. Because a couple of your well, players, I can't remember who exactly it was, but they was acting all big because they had seen me and they had the cameras with me. Yeah. And they seen me talking. So you was like, man, I don't know why y'all acting like that. Ain't none of y'all dead enough yet on the high school level to be over here acting like you big and bad yet. <laughs> so I want to yeah, give you your flowers. I appreciate it. I think I did a good job of bringing them back to reality sometimes. Like, they know I'll be their biggest, I'll be their biggest fan, biggest supporter, but I'm going to critique your heart. I'm going, oh, they know I'm going to say something that might be a little wild. No, see, that's the that's best thing you could have said. It. I said that was, you know, but you know, I think it just comes with the duality of it. Like, you gotta support them, but you also gotta, you know, keep them level headed because the level headedness keeps them hungry. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was all in good, good favor, and you know, just to make sure they become who they needed to become. Got you. Well, man, we got Vontae and Kelvin here, man. This is the two that we've been talking about, man. Either one of y'all got something to say, man. It's y'all two, too. This is the Blue High School show, man. Y'all two, the seniors, he been amping up this whole show, man. Y'all want to talk, or you just going <laughs> to let me and Coach talk the whole time, man, of this show? Hey, talk to the mic, man. No, I'm good. I had a um, good season this year. Um, we had a good season. Made it to the Turkey Bowl playoffs. Did what we supposed to do, but we ain't win it. It's cool. Next year, team, I hope they get it and they go on um, win it. And then, yeah, we're going to be straight right back. Get ready for college. Yes, sir. What's up, quarterback? Mr. Aaron Rodgers, man. That's what he told me. AR-12. That was his favorite player. 
Yeah, he can't get off the phone yeah, at all, well, man. He can't let that phone go. Yeah, you would think he true. running a business the way he on his phone. Like, hold up, man, I gotta nah, check something. It's like running the business though. Yeah, it's I like know running that's the business. Got like, you know, got like going on. So what's up, man? How you feel about this season? I know man. it didn't end the way you wanted to. Or how you told me when I first met you. I, look, just how you feel, man? I honestly good. just feel great. I did everything I told Coach Brown I was gonna do from four years ago to the day, and I just feel grateful again a second chance to play again. It's just a lot of. Like, I just embrace the fact that I'm on the field again. And, like, it hit me different because most people don't get the chance to feel, like, get second chance to play football again. And I got one. So I, I really just took my shot and ran with it. And then I let everybody, all the crit, everybody that criticized me and, and said I was washed up because I, my 10th grade year, I won a state championship. So this year, it's kind of had a chip on my shield. Like, I had something to prove. Like, I really wanted more than anybody in my section, for real, for real. And, like, nobody don't work hard as us, for real, for real. Even though we lost, I still don't think nobody worked harder than us. It's like Lord Earth. Like, we, we had to pretty much play a perfect game to beat them. But I feel like together as a whole team, as a whole unit, I feel like we still the best team. Like, I feel like our coaches got one of the best staffs. I just feel like we had a great season. It's like just all along, even with the losses we took, you probably wouldn't even believe our record because how good our play is. But we had a, a lot of setbacks in the season, but – you know, I just feel good to be, you know, be recognized, put Southeast on the map again. To hear why, like, to hear everybody excited about football. Because, you know, usually people ain't excited about football where I come from. But everybody excited about Baloo, what Baloo going to do next year. I don't want to cut you off, but how yeah. that feel, man? You put the mic closer so they get – you just said where you come from, people ain't getting really too excited yeah. about football, man. So how that feel, man, coming from where you come from? And you got to bring excitement back to that area, man. Or, matter of fact, we in DMV lingo, that area, man. How yeah. you feel, Slim? How yeah. that feel, man? You got to bring excitement back to the south side, man. You got to talk heavy, man. Me and look, Coach can't talk the whole time, and we talking look, about the you. Ask, if you ask Coach Brown about me, he'll tell you like I'm an old guy, right? Nah, so, you a young old yeah, head, Yeah, so, all right, so look, I'm going to give you a movie scene. You ever seen Juice? Absolutely. It feel like when Tupac fell off the balcony. Oh man! I feel like oh Bishop. man! He said when Bishop <laughs> fell off the damn mountain. Yeah, feel like Bishop. Yeah. Like Southeast got the juice now. Like, but so many people ain't believing, and I seen so many people's stories after the game. Just saying, like, I, I believe Baloo. Like, I seen a, one dude. Like, he 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 follow all DCIWA sports. He was like, man, I ain't really see him talking too much highly on Baloo before I came here. But then I I seen I, I came here. I just seen him like, man, Baloo, one of my favorite schools and all this. Well, it just feel good to put him back on the map. It feel good to do it with the team I started with, for real, for real. The coach I started with, my officer coordinated Dirk. Man, without Dirk, none of this would be possible, for real, for real. Dirk really took my game to the next level, for real. Every day, every grind, every time I quit it, workouts, every time I ducked the workouts, he still pushed me to the limit. So without him, it wouldn't even be perfect. But these next four years, y'all going to see me in college. It's going to be a show, for It'll sure, for show. sure. And I want to leave you with one note. Like I said, man, that yeah. clip of when me and you first met, we're going to drop that soon, probably. I ain't going to give y'all a certain day. I'm going to let y'all figure that out. But I want to say this one word like I told you then. You got a second chance at life. You yeah. got a second chance. Make sure you make the best of it. Because like you just said, where you from, a lot of people don't get second chances at life. Ain't no secret. Absolutely, no. man. No, for real. Yeah, man, coach, man. Since we speaking of the southeast, man, how that make you feel, a southeast native, born and raised, the head that Baloo High School in southeast now is on Instagram, Facebooks, the Twitters, the Threads, all that, whatever, all these crazy social media sites, and y'all getting highlighted in a way that southeast don't normally get highlighted in. They always, when they bring up southeast DC, we know how the news and how the rappers and how everybody else want to make these southeast seem like, oh, it's this and that. Man. But now people on the social media sites talking, shit, southeast got some players down there. Y'all might want to go slide out and on a Friday night when you free and go check them out. So what's crazy is like, you know, I bounced around, brother. I done been every part of the city. I didn't even touch PG County, Maryland, right? You know, that's why I went to school at. Right. So, like, love the South. Ain't nothing like the love of the South. I remember one day me and Kelvin driving together, and we trying to get, you know, through a gate because, we, you know, we ride through a complex, and they like, oh, she held the gate for us. I don't even know us from nowhere. Kelvin was like, man, that's why I love Southeast. And we just both had a moment, like, man, ain't nothing like it. You know, like I kind of mentioned earlier like, about the Baloo family. Like, it's a family. Like, the South is turd. The South is treacherous, right? 
But at the same time, there's so much gold in it. And it's like strong family values in certain neighborhoods that's just long and rich. So, you know, even when you look at my team, one thing I stood on all year, and I made them raise their hands one day, I got a real Southeast team. Like if you look at my kids, they've been in Southeast in elementary school. So that's just a testament to what our plan was to restore the order of the South, right? Um, and we've done that. We got the South believing again. The South really believes in what it be. Like, I, again, I say they showed up at the turkey bowl. And it's just not lost on me, the effort my kids put in. Like, most of the time, sometimes we broke blue on three, southeast on six. We put the pride and honor to want to restore what it is to play in southeast, to be from southeast, to be born in southeast. Right? And then, if you know, like, southeast broken down into two parts. Absolutely. Like, and so, like, we in the war, they part of it. And I'm not saying it's no different. Like, you know, my you know my neighborhood is the War Seven part of it. But when you think about the war, they part of it. Where they from where they play at? Like, that's the heart of the South. What they used to call when I was growing up the dirty, dirty South. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and some things with, you know, and this is in DC in general too. Like, what some of these kids got to see, what they got to endure. They didn't went through it. They didn't see. They didn't a part of it. You know what I mean? So this is a testament that these kids are about to graduate. These kids are going to go to college. These kids are going to go in their careers. And it started in Southeast. And, you know, just think that little beacon of hope might have came from one football season. Like Absolutely. my message preached all football seasons. We don't know when we're going to have this again. Absolutely. We don't know when it's your last time. Like I see dudes go through that in college, right? So just take advantage of it. And, you know, for these guys to put Southeast on their back and, I just want to applaud it and restore it. Man, it's nothing like it. If you notice in the Turkey Bowl, we wore our jerseys. It says Southeast on the, on the right, the, 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 the left chest. The, the map, yeah, the, the Southeast map. It's on the left chest. Like, we had that. End. So that's what we took personal this season is to restore the order and restore the pride and bring the joy back in what it is to play in Southeast, to be born in Southeast, to be raised in Southeast. Or just to live in Southeast, whatever it is, that's what we wanted to do. Absolutely, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Yes, a lot of love y'all showed me, and that ain't no cap what y'all saying. Y'all showed me so much love on the South Side. Y'all almost got me saying, now nah, forget VA, forget Philly. I'm yeah, from Southeast. Oh, man. Man. I'm from DC, <laughs> man. Yeah. For real. Y'all got y'all got me saying slim and everything. Cause not but on some real, man. I I, I really respect how y'all carrying that John down there as a whole program, man, from the players. I remember Calvin, he's snapping out sometimes on coaching, and then I come back a couple games later, and I'm seeing how they, like, no, they got that relationship. So that's always makes that good, man. He showed, like, me and Zoe talk about you could go to college from Southeast. That's a, that's you good that win. you just said that because I've seen that clip that Southeast. he had that almost went viral. He like, for all the youngers out there, y'all like, ain't got to keep going uptown out of Maryland like, to go if you want to win. You can stay right here on the south side. Like my private school, man, don't beat me up when you see this. Like, yeah, I went to a private school, but my whole goal, I wanted to go to public school because I feel like I get way more love. They treat me way better here. Like, people just think, oh, they think about Baloo, they think about fights and everything, and all the negativity. Think about the positive stuff when you think about Baloo. Think about how all of us going to college on the football team. Think Absolutely. about how all our grades, to, believe it or not, all our grades is good. Yeah, two eight, two nine. Coach said, Coach said, I'm gonna ride with y'all, but I ain't gonna lie for y'all because this nah, going out there. I ain't saying three. Yo, I said a two nine, two nine, two eight. But that's still good though because when people, like you said, when people think of Southeast, they like, oh man, them kids ain't nothing but a bunch of young knuckleheads. I ain't going out there to mess with Smitty. So I'm hoping that when y'all seen this, the interview, the clips, all that, y'all out there seeing like. You can go to Southeast and you could do that and you can and you can win. But man, yeah, man, I want to thank y'all for joining me. I want all three of y'all. Matter of fact, I'm gonna hand this mic over and let y'all talk. After. I want all three of y'all to leave us with some words, man. Starting with Coach, and then going down the line, man. Oh, uh, we gonna go with crazy ass Vontae, man. I don't want to Vontae. Let's start with Vontae. Go ahead, Vontae. We go. Go ahead, Vontae. We wait on you. Let's see if you go down. Or you ain't talking today. Listen, this was listen. When with Baloo, this is my first year. This is my first year ever going to a championship or any of that turkey bowl with Baloo. Like the experience I got, I don't think I'd never get that experience with no other any other team. Like that experience by the alumni, all that the love they give you in the morning, 
food, afternoon food, Thanksgiving food at that too. Like it's so it's so like that. And then like the education at Baloo, it's good education and all that. People just always think this fights like like the quarterback said, it's always education good. Yeah. The three words I wanna leave you with, man, is just like don't take life for granted for real, for real. Like cherish what you got. Cause when it's gone, you're gonna really think and just and just wish you would have did this better. Like, probably just probably like two hours after the turkey bowl game, I just thought about all the throws I missed, and then how I could have changed that. But in the moment, I'm thinking I'm having a good game because I'm completing a lot of passes. But it was just about the passes I didn't complete. In the moment, I was like I had a good game, but after the game, I was like it wasn't too really too good. It's not really my it wasn't my best me. I ain't really give out my best me out there. I gave a good good performance, but it wasn't really my best self. So I just want you to like just to like stay with whatever you going stay whatever you stay with whatever you gonna do and cherish it, cause when it's gone you really gonna miss it. I think my biggest thing, man, is to really enjoy the moment, man. And I think that's one thing I'm thankful that I've done this year. I've been able to enjoy the moment. This was a legendary run for us. Like it was a, it was a, it was a solid run. We lost three games in a row, bro. Everybody gave up on us. We ain't never give up on ourselves, so and we enjoyed the moment. And I think I live on one of the quotes that take as many pictures as you want because one day, only thing you're going to have left is pictures. And y'all know, like, we had 15 cameras, probably 6 to 15 Absolutely. cameras, a game on our sideline. And one day when these guys 40 and I'm a old man, 50, 60 years old, we're going to look back at this and, like, yo, this jump-started the rest of our lives. And I've said this to them before, like, this run jump started for us the rest of our lives. We watched each other grow up. Like when I first met them, I was 24, 25 years old. He was a young man. I was young. 24, 25 years old. I still remember picking Kelvin up. We going to get pizza from 7 Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But we watched each other grow up. We watched each other get wise. We watched each other get better. I watched them become better players. They watched me become a better man. They watched me become a better coach. But I've, I can live with the fact that I've enjoyed every moment with them. I never looked at the moment. I never looked at the moment of anything bigger than what it was. It was just a moment. So, you know, one thing I want anybody to take away that watch this interview, enjoy the moment, right? You know, we don't get them times back. So enjoy the moment. Take as many pictures as you want. Get as many videos as you want. Because one day, that's all we got. And, you know, again, I'll never coach my guys again. And, you know, that's college. It's coming college. Through and I got college. Ha, ha, ha. But, you know, outside of that, like, it's a joy. And I enjoyed every moment, every second, every hour. Other season with these guys through the good, bad, and the ugly. We did what we did, and you know, I enjoyed it. So, enjoy the moment, y'all. Enjoy the moment, man. There you go, man. You know, the Southeast edition of you know, Smitty's. Uh, let's talk about it, man. It was a pleasure having my guys from the South Side come through and chill, chill with me, man. Until next time, we out of here. <laughs>